Hi everyone, my name is Raphael. Um, I registered on the Frappe Forum seven years ago when I was uh, still a student living in the dormitory and uh, yeah, started exploring Frappe from there. Um, I went to the first conference, uh, met Rushab there and uh, also found my first clients since I pitched myself there as a freelancer. Um, nowadays, we're a team of uh, four people full-time and supported by two working students and two freelancers, a uh, couple of great suppliers like Resilient Tech. Uh, this is my GitHub contribution graph. So I did around 2,500 contributions to the Frappiverse in the past year. Thank you. But uh, yeah, as contribution counts uh, really anything like uh, commits, comments, pull requests, discussions. Um, two years ago, I was honored to receive the Best Contributor Award. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't be here to accept it in person, but thanks again to everybody who voted for me there. Uh, but why should you contribute, really? Um, there are a lot of reasons. Um, one great thing about ERP Next is that it's open source and you can just, uh, you know, scratch your own itch, as the saying goes. So whenever something bothers you, why uh, go to support or wait for somebody to fix it? You can just fix it yourself. And um, I mean, if you're a paying customer, that's fine, but it's fine to go to support. But if you're an open source user, then it's really easy to just uh, go ahead, fix the bug yourself, and uh, then you're fine as well. Also, I, yeah, I cannot personally really stand people that only complain a lot, but don't contribute. Unless they are our customers and pay us, then it's fine, of course. <laughs> Um, yeah, so these are a couple of reasons uh, to contribute. Um, another one is that you really have global impact. I mean, whenever you contribute something, it helps everybody in this room and companies all over the world. So it's really awesome to know what impact your work has and yeah, that your work is not for nothing. Um, a first great way to help others is to contribute on the forums. Uh, this is, is a screenshot from the late John Clark, who was really active on the forums. Um, I'm personally not very active at the time, but uh, I was in my earlier days. And yeah, as you can see, uh, John was yeah really contributed a lot on the forums. Was very helpful to everybody who asked a question and uh, set a great example for us all. Um, this can also be great content marketing when you're starting as a consultant or um, yeah, as a company offering customizations, implementations for ERP Next, because people will read your posts, uh, they will see that you know what you're talking about and they will start hiring you. Um, yeah, there are also lots of uh, Telegram groups where there are countless of questions every day. Um, actually, most of our customers, I think, uh, come to us because they found some of my posts on the Telegram groups or on the forums and wanted to know more about it. Another great way to contribute, um, as Nabin also mentioned in the keynote, is to contribute to documentation. I mean, yeah, documentation is really useful for everybody, as you know, but nobody really likes to do it. So um, contributions there are always welcome. So yeah, whenever you discover how a feature works that was maybe undocumented previously, um, just make a small write-up, push it on the documentation. If you don't have access yet, you can get it from Frappy, just reach out to somebody. So you get write access on the docs page and yeah, then you can go ahead. Another way to contribute are translations. Um, 
the translation platform uh, was contributed or the integration with the translation platform was also contributed by me I think a year or two ago. Previously it was kind of uh, complicated, tedious to contribute translations but now it became really easy. You just have to register on Frappe, uh, on uh, Crowdin slash project Frappe and uh, you get a really nice UI where you can um, suggest new translations and review other translations. This is what the UI looks like. Uh, you can see a list of all the languages that are currently being supported and their translation progress. And uh, this is the translator's view uh, with the translatable strings to the left and uh, in the middle you have the individual string that is selected and some translation suggestions from Google Translate below. Um, so yeah, it becomes really easy like with two clicks you can add a translation, with one click you can approve it and then will become part of Rappi. At the moment we have around 26,000 translatable strings across all Frappe apps. So there's really a lot of work to do and um, yeah, your help would be really appreciated here. Um, also for these uh, languages listed here, um, these could really use your help. Um, the other ones are already pretty much complete, but there's a lot of work to do here. Um, you might also wonder how these translations become part of ERP Next. Um, it's very well integrated with GitHub, so um, every day after you've added your translations, Crowdin creates an automated pull request to GitHub um, that goes in like any other code contribution and yeah, just somebody needs to click approve and then your translations will become part of the source code. Um, this is what the file changes look like. Uh, in this case there were uh, two Serbian translations being added. Um, that's like a standardized uh, translation format. And for Frappe, for, uh, for Frappe translations you never need to edit these files manually as it was before. With the CSV translations this is all done in an automated way. And your manual edits would get overridden. So uh, yeah, all, all contributions need to be via Crowdin. Uh, this is what my screen looks like in my day-to-day -day work. Uh, so for more serious code contributions you need a development setup. Of course, uh, first of all you should be very familiar with uh, Python, JavaScript, SQL. Um, and yeah, when I started out in the early days, I would use to uh, SSH into a production server, make my changes there, um, restart the bench, look how it turned out in the front end, but that's really not the way you should do it. Uh, the proper way is to install Frappe on your local device. You can either, either uh, install it directly or you can use some great tools like Frappe Bench, they also, uh, like Frappe Docker, they also have a development setup. And it's yeah, really easy to get started there. Um, okay, screen turned out for a short time. Um, yeah, another great tool that's really useful when you have it installed locally is that you can use the debugger of your development environment. This is what you see to the top here. Um, that's a tool to step through your code um, instruction by instruction and really see what the code does. So you don't need to look at it and guess what it does, but you can really understand it step by step and it's uh, much easier to do debugging this way. Okay, so uh, this was my first ever pull request back in 2018. Um, the lesson here is to really start small. As you can see, this was a single word change. I just uh, changed the English manual to the German Handbuch. 
and this PR got merged by Rushab after two days. Uh, usually it can take a bit longer though, so uh, when you raise a pull request that's a bit more complicated. You can expect it to take a couple of um, weeks or maybe even months, depending on if you find an eager reviewer. Um, then I started um, yeah, contributing German accounting and compliance features. Um, the yeah, uh, regional GL entry export called Datev, uh, some chart of accounts. And yeah, the useful thing was that uh, nobody could tell me on a functional front that I was wrong because nobody had any clue about German features. Um, I guess the reviewers from Frappe only looked at uh, yeah, code quality and general adherence to standards. But apart from that, I could do what I want really. Uh, sometimes it also makes sense to discuss what you want to do first. Uh, for example, here I propose to um, link employees to the bank account instead of storing it in duplicate fields within the employee. But as you can see, this didn't uh, create a lot of excitement, only one thumbs up. And I never really worked on this, but yeah, communication is really key. So. Um, yeah, and just be very elaborate with your uh, yeah with your documentation, what you're planning to do, what you already did, why you did it, so that other people can understand what you're working on and why you do it. It's really hard to make sense of just a yeah PR with a one-line description or no description at all. And this way, yeah, you can also check with the core team if it makes sense to have these features or not and then your changes are much more likely to get accepted. There's the saying that every change breaks someone's workflow. So um, this is really tricky because um, yeah, you want to contribute something, but you cannot really do it because it would be a breaking change. For example, if you just make an existing field mandatory, then it will maybe break the API integrations from somebody else. Um, so yeah, changes should be really small, well-founded, uh, good reasons, and yeah, you, you can you know there are a lot of uh, contribution guidelines on the GitHub wiki of the apps to follow, um, and yeah, to really keep these changes uh, focused and small, not to try to do too many things at once, just make tiny changes one at a time. Um, that's really the way to go here. Um, then you can also um, balance pull requests and reviews because of course the other people who are contributing also want their PRs to get reviewed. So you can check out others' PRs and yeah, install them on your machine, try if your workflow works or if you see anything unexpected happening. Um, that's, yeah always there always needs to be a balance you know and um, it also helps you build rapport with the other maintainers if you maybe gave feedback on their prs and then you will get some feedback on yours etc um, yeah it's really give and take there um, so after five years uh, these are my results i got uh, close to 1000 prs merged in the yeah, over all of the Frappe apps and thank you and reviewed 800 PRs, published five apps and helped more than 70 companies with their ERP Next implementation. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot. Um, these are my contact details and um, let me know if you have any questions in case we have time for that.